Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. You might notice that something's missing from my door, and that's the big scratch that was in it in previous videos. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be showing you how to fix that today, but what I am gonna be showing you is how I put my new door on. Now, right now you might be thinking, well, why are you putting out a video on putting a new door on? Anyone can do that, there's nothing special about that. Well, I actually bought this as a base model door. So this is a GXL Land Cruiser, and that's pretty obvious by the gray strips that are on the doors. Um, the base models don't have those grey strips, they don't have central locking, they don't have electric windows, uh, they don't have a speaker, and they don't have this nice interior door trim. Um, so today I'm actually going to be showing you how I went and converted a base model door to a GXL door and put it on my car. And the reason I did that was because I wanted to get rid of that scratch. Now the reason you might end up with a base model door is because it might be cheaper, it might be all that's available, um, it's just, you know, sometimes you get doors that come up in buy, swap and sell pages on Facebook and it's just what's there, it's what you got to grab. Sometimes you won't always get what you're looking for. But the good thing about Land Cruisers is that everything is very interchangeable. You might find that the base model door actually has spots for everything in a GXL door, it just hasn't included them. For instance, like the speaker hole is there, but no speaker and um, spots for all the wiring looms, holes for all the clips, it's all in there. They just haven't actually put it in the base model door. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how I converted a base model door to a GXL door. As you can see, there's a pretty severe dent and scratch in that door. And that's why I'm gonna be changing this over today. I can pretty proudly say that wasn't actually me that put the dent in the car. That was there before I bought it. At first glance at the door, you can pretty obviously see that this is lacking a lot of the features that the GXL models do. There's no speaker, no electric windows, or we'll later on find that there is no central locking, and no, actually no wiring looms through the whole thing. So this is going to be quite a big job of removing everything from the door and putting all of the GXL stuff back in and then putting the door on the car. This was actually the part that took me the longest to work out, just because I haven't worked with these manual style windows a lot before. So what you're looking for is a little silver clip that will actually just pop out if you get the right tool in there, and then the handle will just pop right off. Once the interior trim's off and the plastic is out the way, it's really just a matter of unbolting all those mechanisms to make room for the GXL mechanisms to go in their place. If the door catch mechanism doesn't easily detach from the door handle, you may have to take the door handle off like I did to get a better look at what you're doing. Sometimes they just seem to get a bit stuck.
and pretty easily that's the whole door empty and ready to be fitted with GXL parts. Before putting anything new into this door, I thought it was really important to go ahead and give it a good clean and really focus on those little crevices where it's likely to rust out in the future. And then it was time to start parting out the old GXL door. These clips holding the wiring looms in can be pretty tricky. If you can get to the back of them with a pair of pliers, then I suggest so. Otherwise, you might just have to carefully work them out as to not break the back of the clip. So now that we've got the central locking actuator out, we can pretty easily get that door handle out. And then we've got the wiring loom here. So the last mechanism we have to get out is actually the, the window motor here and the mechanism attached to that. So it should be fairly, it will be one of the more challenging swaps, but it won't be too bad, it's doable. And then of course we've got to somehow get this loom out and the grommet that goes back into the door of that. As it turns out, the loom for the door does actually just plug and play in this pillar here behind the seatbelt. Once you've unplugged them, it's pretty easy to feed the loom back through the car, through the door, and we're pretty right to start putting things back into the new door. I'm going to start by first putting in the last thing I took out of the old door, and that is the wiring loom. Once we've got that in place, we can pretty easily start putting in the other mechanisms. The trickiest part I actually found was getting this little green roller into the slot it belongs so that when the mechanism goes up and down, it'll wind the window up and down. This is tricky, but if you don't get it right, then your window won't work. Getting the catch mechanism and actuator back in the door is actually pretty simple. I suggest that you first get the catch mechanism screwed, like bolted back into the door and then go ahead and relink your door handle. Just make sure that the loom and everything is going in in the right place in a way that the wires aren't going to get kinked or damaged.
Putting the speaker in is real simple. You'll just have to steal those little screw plugs from the old door so that you can go ahead and screw it back into the door. And then it's quite easy just to reconnect the loom to the speaker. Now you may have noticed from the start that this window's actually got a tint job on it. And that doesn't fit in with my car because none of the other windows are tinted. So I'm gonna remove this. I'm gonna be using a hair dryer to heat the glue up and a Stanley knife to get the tint started. The reason I'm using a hair dryer is so that the tint and the adhesive layer underneath come off as one and I'm not left with a yucky adhesive layer on there that I have to wash off or something ridiculous. Trust me, this is the easiest way. I use the hairdryer again to heat the glue up behind this grey strip because I'm going to have to put this on the new door as the base models don't have a grey strip. I didn't get any footage but it was pretty simple to heat the glue up behind, similar to what we did with the tin, and just slowly peel the grey strip off without bending it or misshaping it. And while I didn't actually get any footage of swapping the doors over, it's just important that you've got a couple people there to support the door as it's being unbolted and to be there again when you're putting it back on. And finally, I'm going to be putting the grey strip on the new door. And the best way I thought to mark this out was to put some permanent marker on the locators and then rest the grey strip on the door in place and then go ahead and drill the holes. To secure the grey strip back on the door, I'm going to be using this black silicon. While it's not Sikaflex, which is the more common adhesive for this kind of thing, it is an adhesive sealer and it's going to do the trick just fine, I think. And there you have it. That's how you convert a base model 105 series door to a GXL model 105 series door. I hope this has been really helpful for you guys today. I'll catch you all in the next video.